All right, welcome back everybody. So today we're gonna to be taking a break from some fabrication and we're gonna be going over my air management, compressor and tank setup. So I have everything in boxes here. So we're kind of gonna do like an unbox. We'll show you kind of where I'm gonna run, uh, why I'm doing it, uh, we'll look at the compressors, the tank, uh, what airline I chose and also the main air management that I'm going with. Uh, a couple of reasons why I'm going with this is because I had a car that was bagged before in the past and you kind of learn little bits and stuff like that because when they package everything now, you know, different options and stuff like that, it's price point, it's the speed, all that kind of stuff. You know, if your lines are thick enough, you got quarter inch, you got three eighths, all that kind of stuff. So it can be a little bit of confusing. So I'm just gonna show you exactly what I picked, what I wanted and uh, what I went with. So we're gonna get ahead and take a look at that stuff right now. All right, so first things first. These are Bayer 44C compressors. I got a dual pack. I guess it's discounted a little bit if you buy two instead of individually. So this is what they look like. I got black, you can either get black or chrome. So I went with black, mainly just cause it's kind of like the colors of my car. Interior is black, it's red, it's got the red accent on it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be mounting these in the hatch compartment or underneath or hide them. They can be a little noisy. Uh, if you do have them and you know if you had a trunk it'd be one thing but with the Corvette it's right behind your head so that is the only issue I'm really kind of contemplating right now where I'm actually going to mount these I can mount them underneath the car uh, or I can mount them in the back so you can see them right through the glass which I kind of like the idea of seeing all that but at the same time too if you're driving the car you're hearing these bad boys hum it might be a pain in the butt uh, they come with mounting hardware uh, filters and stuff like that basic stuff to hook them up to like your tank uh, so that is what i went with for compressors i am running two a lot of people run one with like a three gallon tank uh, which works perfectly fine uh, my main goal was to be able to just be able to lift it drop it whatever i wanted to not have to wait for the compressors to come on wait for the tank to fill up uh, they are all little things that may be a problem uh, the first car i ever had that was bagged um, I had one compressor, one small tank, and it took forever. Like by the time you moved it up and down a couple times, you're just waiting for it to fill. Uh, I wasn't just trying to get involved with that at all. I didn't want to do that. I want to be able to, you know, lift it up, drop it down as much as I want, whenever I want, and this would do uh, the job for the amount that I'm actually going to be driving the car. So that's what I went with for compressors. So moving on to the tank. Here is a Vixen. Uh, air tank it's a four gallon tank roughly like 27 inches wide uh, I went with this because it's black they have polished aluminum uh, and black tanks uh, this does have their logo right here uh, but it appears like it's just kind of painted on I am going to be putting uh, the EB build something logo probably on here so this might be displayed because it doesn't make any noise I may put this actually in the hatch compartment uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking with right now I will play around with a couple ideas before I actually um, you know start drilling holes uh, but that's kind of like the plan right now so we're gonna have this in the back so this tank comes with mounting hardware and that's about it I believe it's like a seven port tank some on either side to put your dual compressors on either side uh, it lines in lines out and then there's a drain for your petcock to drain any water out of the tank too which is nice but most of the tanks that you get have that option as well which is nice so that is that so far on to the good stuff all right so when it comes to air management, you can either have like solenoids or you can have manual valves. I went with Airlift Performance. It is the 3P or the 3H. The P stands for pressure. Uh, the H is for height. Uh, the only difference between this one and the height is that you can actually add on four height sensors to each wheel. Um, this kit does allow me to go back and get those sensors to put on the car. Uh, the reason why I'm not doing it right now is just because we just did a ton of fabrication in the front and the rear, and I kind of want to just get all that stuff done. And I can just add that on, plug in the connectors down the road. You know what I mean? So that won't be that big of a project, which I may do. I think the idea of having the automatic uh, load 
uh, leveling, you know, if you get a passenger hop in the car, the car automatically levels out, which is a cool feature. Uh, but just to start, this is kind of what I went with, uh, and I think it'll be perfect for that. This is a 3 8 airline kit. So that runs 3 8 lines, obviously. Uh, the other reason was the first car I had that was back had quarter inch lines, and it was slow. I mean, if you're not in a rush and don't care, quarter inch lines is perfectly fine. I know usually it's a lot cheaper if you run quarter inch lines opposed to the 3 8 line kit. It's just a little bit cheaper. I forget what it was, but maybe it was like a hundred or $200 cheaper than the 3 8 one. Uh, but the 3 8 does a trick. It's fast enough where you don't have to wait. It moves it up and down, lets the air out fast enough. Um, that's what I ran on my old car. I did run manual valves in the old car, uh, which was in the cabin. And the thing with running manual valves in the car is that you actually hear the air in the cabin of the car, um, which isn't the end of the world because you're letting all the air out through the manual valves. Um, but this, the actual unit, we'll show you in a second, that's gonna mount probably in the hatch area with the tank. None of these decisions are final. I'm just kind of throwing around ideas right now and maybe we'll throw some of this stuff in the car uh, just to kind of get some ideas and brainstorm a little bit. So in this kit it comes 60 foot of 3 8 airline and then it comes with a compressor harness. Um, you can either get with this a single compressor harness if you go that route just do one compressor one tank or you can get a dual compressor harness which this is so it comes with an extra wiring harness for your second compressor which is nice they really make this easy for you as far as hooking up to the relays in there you don't really have to kind of run your own wiring or make up your own relays and stuff like that they give you pretty much everything you need to hook this system up once all your airbags are in and stuff like that uh, it gives you a water separator the mouse for it some fittings and I believe, yeah, just a couple more extra fittings too. I believe for the tank or the air management unit. So in this, I mean, it's packaged really well too, which is nice. Instructions in here is, uh, I believe harnesses for the actual handheld controller and they give you an actual cutter which you'll need for the airlines instead of using like a razor blade this is a nice exact cutter which helps when you're cutting the airlines so you have a really good fit if you're running quick connect fittings or even actually into the management unit it's just so much easier that way um, so if you don't have one I would recommend get one and they're cheap you can get them anywhere uh, it comes with the actual controller which will mount the car I'll show you where I'm going to mount that So that's what that looks like. It's like the size of an early iPhone. And you can actually mount this this way or this way. Sideways like that in the car. All this stuff actually turns around, uh, which is kind of cool. So you can mount it up on your dash. I'm gonna probably mount this in the center console. And it has one connector here that you'll hook up into uh, like that. Uh, and I think it's, I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it was like three presets or something like that. And this controls all four wheels, which is pretty cool. That's that, and then this is what the actual manifold looks like, which all your airlines will go into. And this is a really nice piece. You've probably seen this if you're into air ride. Uh, these are really nice. I mean, just the look of it is awesome. That's gonna go in the back with the tank. Uh, probably doesn't also make a lot of noise either, compared to the compressors at least. So I'll probably have that back there as well. Uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's a big upgrade from what I, I remember doing it. It's probably been like 15 years ago since I actually had something on air ride with the manual valves and stuff like that. So the technology from my standpoint has come a long way uh, and this kit is really cool uh, and it seems to be pretty popular out there. Uh, it's kind of one of the reasons why I went with it. It's got a lot of really great reviews. There's a lot of guys running performance cars with this setup in here and that was kind of the whole uh, reason why I was doing whole performance air ride setup. I wanted something accurate, consistent, uh, so I can drive the car. 
Uh, so that is that. So we're gonna probably throw a couple of these things in the car and uh, just kind of get an idea where I wanna place everything to. So I'm gonna zoom in and just show you, uh, you know, pretty much what everything looks like up close. All right, so my idea for mounting the controller at the moment is this. Right in this compartment here where your power seat and mirror switch is, um, it fits almost perfectly right in there like that. So I almost want to make some sort of mount or tray that we can just kind of sit that thing right in there like that. Uh, and then you can control it while your arm's on the armrest and it's easy to get to. Uh, I mean, you probably could use either one of those spaces or a vent or remove your cup holders. Uh, I still like the factory appearance of the car for the most part. So I just kind of like, you know, having this right here and then I can run the wires, you know, underneath the armrest here, just so it's nice and hidden too. So that's my plan with that at the moment. This is kind of option A here. I'll pretty much take up all the room back here. But I think it would be kind of cool to have it on display like this. But then you're losing this whole area in here pretty much for storage or anything. But this car is not driven that much. I don't, it's not my daily driver or anything like that. So it could possibly go this route here. Uh, but like I said, the only downfall here is the compressors are right there. The front seats are right there. So that may be an option, but it may not. I'm not sure, but we'll get to it. The other thing is, you can actually see it with the hatch closed, which I thought would be kind of cool to kind of show it off. All right, so that was it for today's video. So we are getting so close now. I believe we have just one more video left to just kind of finalize the rear suspension, getting that all bolted back up in there. Uh, then we're gonna be running some airlines hooking up the compressors, wires, all that kind of stuff. And we'll be able to get the wheels back on this thing and get it on the ground and start testing it and driving it and uh, being able to see what it looks like completely done and seeing how low we'll be able to get this thing. So if you enjoyed the video, press like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.